All right, welcome to the Newton's Crazy Laws Part 4. Um, we're going to go through some examples here. And um, occasionally I'll ask you to pause it so you can work on your own and then unpause it and you can check your work. All right, so don't just copy the screen. Do these sort of on your own so that we can learn from them if we make mistakes. Okay, crazy situation number one, air friction. An object in free fall will encounter air friction while falling. So far we have neglected this and said all objects accelerate at little g. But this is usually not true. Um, air friction comes into play all the time. All right, now in lab, if we're dropping something a couple meters in the classroom and timing it or whatever, it's actually okay to neglect <coughs> air friction and still get good answers. Um, if we're skydiving, not okay to neglect air friction. All right, so what is it? Air friction is not a constant force in, as in the case of sliding friction. In other words, we can't use mu. All right, it's not a constant force, it changes. The faster an object goes, the more air friction it encounters because the object is literally running into more air molecules. Okay? Until it reaches terminal velocity. So you can think of it as the faster it goes, the more air it's literally going to collide with. In fact, some people say air friction is not friction at all. It's more of, um, it's more of a collision. Okay? So at terminal velocity, yes, what Billy? Exactly? What exactly happens at terminal velocity? Okay, at terminal velocity, F net equals zero. Okay. Because mg is canceled out by friction. Okay, now what does that mean? What actually happens? Once something reaches terminal velocity, it will not accelerate anymore. Okay, now it's still moving very, very fast, and terminal velocity is different for different things okay depending on the shape and all that and there's all kinds of calculations that we will not do as part of this um, that you know for speed and everything like that we're not going to get into that today okay yes Billy so the force of friction of the air going down is equal to mg then exactly okay let's look at the FBD so mg is actually the downward force and air friction we're just gonna call it F little f is that okay now this is only true at terminal velocity if we are not quite to, t to terminal velocity this will be a smaller vector okay so let's start out with this example which doesn't even deal with air friction we're gonna talk about a mouse and an elephant without air friction Here's the situation, a 10,000 Newton baby elephant and a 10 Newton chubby mouse are in free fall skydiving together, neglecting air friction. The elephant has a mass of 1,000, the mouse is one kilogram. What are their accelerations? Okay, well the elephant has got an mg for the FBD that looks like this and that is the only force I'm gonna draw because that's the only force that's there. The mouse, I'm going to say little mg. Okay, now this seems like a, do we even need to do anything? Okay, what are their accelerations? Well, it's just g. All right, the, the reason why I put this on here though, is I wanted to point out that their accelerations are the same, but their forces are not. Okay, so if I calculate the force for the elephant, it'll come out to, 10,000 newtons, we're given it right there. Okay, so 10,000 newtons for that. The mouse is one kilogram, so 10 newtons. All right, and if I have these forces and I wanted to verify that they're accelerating at little g, all I'd have to do is divide that by their masses. So if I do 10 divided by one, I'll get little g. If I do 10,000 newtons, divided by a thousand for the kilograms, I'll get 
little g. Okay? All right. So, different forces but same acceleration. Now, why would that be? It's because of inertia. Okay? An elephant of 1,000 kilograms takes more force to accelerate at little g than a mouse would. A mouse is only one kilogram. It doesn't take as much force. Only 10 newtons to accelerate it at little g. Okay, so now the new stuff. Example two, let's deal with some air friction. <clears throat> what is the acceleration of two falling skydivers, total mass of 270 kilograms, when an upward wind force is equal to a quarter of their weight? All right, after opening the parachute, they descend at constant speed. What's the upward force during this time? So we'll split this into two parts. All right, part one here, and part two will be the after opening the parachute. <coughs> All right, so let's do an FBD. So over here, we have a mass equal to 270. All right and so they're going to have an mg okay now the upward wind force is only a quarter of mg so here I'm going to say force of friction is equal to a fourth of their weight okay now this is going to increase the faster they go until we get to terminal velocity where F net will be zero. Yes, Jonas? Uh, yes. Would, um, would this prove that uh, the force of friction for air is a lazy force? Would this prove that the force of friction for air is a lazy force? Yes, it would. Because if, there's n if something is not falling, there's no air friction to be had. So that's right. Air friction can only be as great as the mg. Um, in other words, air friction cannot climb bigger than mg because if it, if it could, that means after a while when something fell, it would then eventually accelerate upwards, which would be totally weird. So that's a good point. You could think of air friction as a lazy force. Yeah. Nice, Jonas. Good point. Okay. Now we're going to do, we did the FB, FBD, let's do the N2L. Okay. We want to solve for acceleration. I'm going to say F net is equal to mg minus force of friction. I can replace that with ma is equal to mg minus force of friction is a quarter mg. So we're a quarter of the way force wise up to terminal velocity. All right, now, just like with gravity, in other situations, you notice that m's cancel. So it doesn't actually matter what the mass is. Um, it all cancels out right there. All right, so acceleration is equal to g minus quarter g. And if you plug in 9.8s there, we'll do 9.8 minus and then fourth g, if I plug that into my calculator, I will get 2.45. All right, so my acceleration at that point in time comes out to 7.35 meters per second squared. Okay, question for you. So the acceleration is going down. Is the person slowing down? Anyone? Anyone? Timmy, what do you think? Is the person slowing down? I would say that the person is slowing down. Okay, the person's acceleration is getting smaller, but it is still downward. So the person oh. is still speeding up. Okay, yeah. thank you, Timmy. Thanks for being bold. Okay, now that's Part two, over here. After opening, they're gonna be at constant speed. What's the upward force during this time? Okay, so this is when they are at terminal velocity. Um, there's one terminal velocity over here for when they don't have the chute open. 
Over here, terminal velocity is going to be less. But that actually doesn't matter. Let's just draw the FBD. Mg, force of friction, have to be equal because of constant speed. Acceleration equals zero. So we can say zero equals Mg minus force of friction. All right, or <coughs> we can say force of friction is equal to their weight, which is 270 times 9.8. Now they are not accelerating at 9.8, but the G is calculating their weight, okay? So I get 2646 Newtons is the force of friction. <clears throat> so the air is pushing up on the person with the same force as the person, um, as the interaction between the earth and the ground. Or sorry, the earth and the person, their weight. Okay, oh, now it's time for a surprise trendy slang flashcard. Okay, um, mobbing. Anybody know what that means? <clears throat> I didn't think so. Let's check it out. Here's the definition. Mobbin means driving around with friends, especially while playing music, and to tra attract potential romantic partners. Hmm. Synonymous with cruising, schmobbin, rolling, and other things. Okay, an example. Some medical professionals here. You might hear them saying something like this. Let's drop this busta off and go mobbing while the siren's on. Okay, pretty interesting stuff. Now you know some new slang. Okay, we'll get, we'll get some more of those later. Just pay attention. All right, crazy situation number two. Boxes touching and contact force, exciting. Okay, these problems just replace tension with contact force, no big deal. It really is no big deal. Okay, so let's draw the situation over here. We got the ground. We got a 5 kilogram box. And then we've got a 10 kilogram box. Not to scale. And they are touching each other. A 45 Newton force is applied to the 5, causing the boxes to accelerate. So I'm going to draw a force applied like this. <clears throat> I'm going to call it 45 Newtons, <clears throat> and the boxes are going to accelerate. Okay, now we also know that mu is equal to 0.2, and what will be the acceleration of the system? Hint, FBD, 2F net equations, okay, basically FBD, N2L. So over here, M1, over here, M2. And we're going to call this M1, and we'll call M2 the bigger box, or the more massive box. All right, so pause the video right now and draw your own FBDs, and then um, you can unpause it and see if you were right. Okay, pause now. All right, you've drawn the FBDs on your own. Here's, here's the answer. Okay, so for M1 I got normal, I've got M1G, then I've got a 45 Newton force acting this way. We could call that a force applied if we want. And then this way I actually have two forces. I've got a force applied, or sorry, I've got FC, contact force, and then I've got the force of friction. I'll draw those basically the same length because I don't really know the values yet. Okay, two forces left, one force to the right. So the 45 Newton force I just put on this side. Okay, and then this box's contact force is that way and the force of friction. Okay, for M2 it's actually a little bit simpler. I got M2G, I got normal, then I've got the contact force, FC, 
pushing that box to the right. Okay, so the 45 newtons is not actually acting on the 10. Okay, the box's contact force is acting on the 10. Then I've got force of friction. All right, so let's do the N2L part. Okay, so I'm going to say F net is equal to, and this is for the M1, is equal to the 45 minus force of contact minus force of friction. Okay, then for M2, I've got F net is equal to the force of contact right here minus force of friction okay and I'm gonna put a 1 there and a 2 there because those forces are different alright now let's combine these we can set these equal to MA so I'm gonna go over here just to save time and space and put M1A and then I'm gonna go over here and put M2 a, and those accelerations are the same. Okay. All right. Now, these are the two equations I'm going to combine, and you're going to see this is just like a tension problem here in a second. Okay. So I've got 45 minus the force of contact plus force of contact. So these actually cancel. So minus FC and a plus FC. I'm not even going to write them down. I've got 45 minus force of friction 1 minus force of friction 2 equals M1A plus M2A. All right. Now all I have to do is use the fun equation for block 1, fun equation for block 2, and do a little bit of algebraic mani manipulation and I'll get the acceleration. Okay, so pause the video now and finish the problem and get a value for acceleration down here. All right, pause it right now. Okay, if you did it correctly, the acceleration is 1.04 meters per second squared. Okay, and I'm not actually going to go through the rest of it. Um, I'll let you rearrange until you get it, get it correct on your own. Okay, the back side of this will be done on a separate video, but first, another slang flashcard. Are you ready? Off the chain. What the heck does that mean? Let's find out. Off the chain means fun, enjoyable, referring to an event or thing rather than a person. Synonymous with off the hook, off the hinges, bomb.com, sick, rad, tight, bang, and awesome, bananas. Place where it might be used. Lovely dinner right here. The waiter comes up and he could say something like, the filet is straight off the chain this evening. Okay, so you can use that maybe at Thanksgiving dinner with your family. All right, um, thanks for watching and enjoy video two, Hicks out.